Welcome to Take Me to Your Leader Tuesday, and feel free to join us on any given Tuesday as we draw fan art of aliens or aliens from our own imaginations. Donkey Job Projects! What's up everybody, this is Marshall Lee of Donkey Job Projects, and uh, today I'm bringing you another Take Me to Your Leader Tuesday, <laughs> a collaboration that I'm doing with Mr. Scott Circland. Um, definitely go check out his video. He's been uh, doing these with me and uh, this whole month and it's a new challenge that we would love to have you participate in as the kind of intro um, talked about. We have had some participants um, so far and um, in fact I have a playlist and I'll link it down below. I feel like I don't think I did link it in the last video. I'm not sure um, <clears throat> but uh, I have a playlist and Scott has a playlist. I'm not, I haven't checked his out yet to find out um, if he added people, but there was one person who did a YouTube video um, of their Take Me to Your Leader Tuesday. So I would definitely say, uh, I want to say it's Rob Johnson, right? I think so, right? Um, so, and he did like a really cool um, video um, talking about, you know, his his character and stuff and where he got the idea and whatnot so definitely check that out and um i really dug that and thank you for participating man um and anybody else who wants to do a video that's awesome if you want to just post it on social media there's been definitely some people doing that as well which is really cool really appreciate that that's super fun and i love seeing all these different you know um characters and stuff um <clears throat> So today I want to talk about creativity, um, basically how to be creative. Um, and I think, you know, I don't know, growing up, I thought a lot about being original, I guess. Like I wanted to be original. Or eventually I realized that there's no way to possibly be 100% original. Um, but you know, I've always wanted to try my best to kind of do stuff that I haven't seen, you know, which is cool. It's all, it's all good. And I think there's a, a healthy amount of that that's good. You know, you want to not just do the same thing everybody else is doing. You want to, you know, that's one thing that artists do is they kind of push boundaries and make the world consider things maybe they haven't considered before. And um, <clears throat> it's a really good role for, for an artist. You know, it's one of the things that we can do to help um, in society. Um, so that being said, though, um, when you're creating like a character and stuff, you know, sometimes it's easy to be very much of a copycat. Um, you can see evidence of things like that with um, some kind of comics like in the 90s. Um, Rob Liefeld is very, is, has often been talked about doing this. Um, it's kind of obvious where his influences are. Um, but I think in that he still did create, you know, because he had those things that he liked and you could kind of see it pretty easily. You could also see, he, he did create some stuff that was really, you know, lasting and interesting, like the character Cable, he's totally derivative. Um, <clears throat> from, you know, Terminator and, you know, other, like, action movies of the time. Um, you know, some of his other characters, a lot, he had a bunch of other characters, like in Youngblood, he had a character that looked a lot like Wolverine, and, you know, <clears throat> there's just been a lot of stuff that's been kind of copycat type things, but at the same time, he combined things too um, to make new new stuff, and I mean, he did create Deadpool, which kind of looks like you know a mix between like he's kind of seems like the, a mix between like Spider-Man and the Punisher or something like that, um, or maybe another character who's like badass or whatever, um, you know. But he had that kind of attitude of like Spider-Man. Too. So I don't know. It's kind of interesting, and and his you know costume kind of had that look too. So I don't know. There's there's a lot of stuff, and 
for me, it, and I think that's for everybody though, like you see that in every artist, you see sometimes you can tell very easily their influences and, you know, Rob Liefeld might not be the best example because a lot of people don't really love his stuff. Um, but a lot of people do, you know, it is what it is, but, um, you know, there's, a, I, you can see that in whatever your favorite artist is, you can, if you really break down what they're doing and, and look into what their influences are and, you know, maybe when, when they grew up and what they were interested in, <clears throat> you can start to see their influences. Um, and I know with me, like, I, I think about like the Hitchhiker story that I did for the Life in Space Anthology. And, um, you know, I can sit there and, and, and really any of the comics and things that I make, I can sit there and literally pick out, especially because I'm me and I know what was going through my head when I created these things, I can pick out the influences pretty easily. Um, you know, the main character, Seti, he, um, he was... You know, at the time, all of us hundreds who were involved with the anthology were working on our comic, doing character designs and stuff like that. And at that time, Chris McQuinlan was doing, um, creating his characters for Monkey Junk. And I'll, I'll be honest, like, some of how he simplifies characters and some of the direction he was taking with, um, what's, what's his character, uh... Chris P. Bacon, I think, <laughs> is what, like one of the main characters in, in Monkey Junk. Um, it's definitely like, I, I thought, you know, I kind of thought of him while I was doing that a little bit, but also, you know, this idea of like, um, just kind of an alien creature um, with uh, that kind of reflex, because I was also watching Star Wars at that time a lot. Um, and, um, you know, Han Solo, like, I, I kind of took some influence from, from Han Solo's outfit and stuff like that, but a wholly diff different, totally different personality and stuff. Maybe a little similar, but not much. Um, <clears throat> and then the character Gogan, he kind of looks like, the, um, what are they called, the um, Skeksis in, in Dark Crystal. He's kind of got a look that's sort of like them, um, but also taking uh, some stuff from like, um, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know, with the kind of robe that he wears and stuff like that. Um, so there's a little bit of that. and um, <clears throat> There's a couple scenes in the comic where um, that are definitely di direct, not references, but like, you can see the influence from Star Wars scenes and stuff like that. Um, there's a part where like they kind of do this, you know, flip up like in the ship, they're in a ship and, and they kind of do this flip up and then they do a little spin and, and then dive into a crater, you know, kind of like Han Solo did on that um, asteroid. Um, and then uh, what else? There's, a, there's like the part where <coughs> Luke Skywalker is like, this is a piece, you know, this ship is a piece of crap, you know, talking about the Millennium Falcon, and, um, you know, Seti has kind of some similar talk like that when he notices the vehicle um, that Gogan is using um, for certain things, so, you know, that kind of stuff, it, it, it's like, but it's not, if you, when you read the story, you're going to be like, this isn't Star Wars, this is something totally different. There's also this mention of the Gretel Skid Race, the Gretel Squid Races, which totally, you know, was I was kind of thinking of the pod races, but it's really nothing like this pod races. It's something totally different. Um, so anyways, <laughs> like, it's, it's easy to take influence, but you don't want to, like, rob it wholesale, you know. Sometimes stuff that Rob Liefeld did you could tell, like, this character is his Wolverine character, and it was, like, kind of cheesy. But then there was other times where he combined a few things, and it came up with something different that you hadn't seen before. So, maybe he is a good example, because you can see, like, the good version and the not-so-good version of <laughs> creating stuff. Um, so sometimes you can be too derivative, and it, it gets a little, um, kind of ridiculous and stuff, and 
I don't know. It, you never. It's really fine line. It's hard to know when when is too far and when is not. But that being said, how to be creative? Like anytime you create something cool, it's like it's a combination of many things. It's taking like puzzle pieces and putting them backwards and painting some different colors and smashing some where they don't fit and taking all that stuff and finding like a new picture, you know, out of what you originally had, you know, all these little pieces. You know, I actually was thinking like, I don't know, it'd be cool to kind of make a video like that, but really hard probably too. But anyways, um, so I don't know, it, it's always, there's never an original thing, but at the same time, the combination of already created things is what makes original things. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I mean, with this character, you know, these characters I'm doing with the aliens, um, this, my wife was saying, oh, that reminds me, you'll see the next, the one for next week. The, oh, that one reminds me for, of this character from Monsters, Inc. And this one here, again, Star Wars, like, it reminds me of, uh, Obi-Wan goes into, Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan goes into a bar and talks to, or, or a, a diner and talks to the cook at the diner, and he kind of reminds me of that character with the kind of weird mustache thing going on, um, and kind of the ob obesity, you know, but, you know, I don't, I don't know where I got other things from, I mean, some of it's just from nature, it kind of has like a spider look, but it's not typical spider legs also he, he i call this guy stew sticks and he kind of reminds me of like something that would be a pod racer like a mechanic at a pod racer or something so i don't know that's kind of the thoughts i had with this um hopefully you dig it um <laughs> there's a the little animation you can see like the finished product flipped around a little bit um yeah hopefully you dig it i really appreciate you guys watching definitely go check out scott's um video for this week last week i got mine up um a little late by accident something i had an issue with youtube um scheduling but whatever anyways thanks for watching and i'll talk to you next week on taking to you later tuesday